Okay. Well, welcome to our first, well, maybe of, who knows how many, how many webinars will we run. Welcome to our first webinar about the Lego Series Play. And we will uh, discuss about the agenda, but now just a little bit introduction about us. So who we are. I am Daniele from Italy. I am a, well, I, I'm an engineer. I run classical and traditional consulting um, and from, well, when I graduated in 2007, then in 2012, I started my transformation and I splitted my experience into digital with four years in this two companies, Open Knowledge and Life Interaction. And then I added also the business model design area. And then in 2016, I, I converted, I, I decided to structure all my energy in Innovation Lab, that is now my, my company. And also I started my experience in Lego Series Play with the certification in the Association of Master Trainer Lego Series Play. And then I started a lot of projects, uh, such as LSP Hub, LSP Link, Happy to Help, and who knows in the future. <laughs> so a lot of things. Then we have Matthias. Hello. So um, I studied um, computer informatics and I worked uh, 13 years as an IT consultant all over the globe in um, different, in various uh, intercultural teams. I'm a trained coach, mediator, and um, of course, a Lego Series Play facilitator. And um, for those who are interested, in, especially for, for those from Germany, I am the organizer of a meetup group as well which is called Lego Series Play Deutschland. And I'm the owner of and founder of Precolution.com. My name is Matthias Renner. Good evening. Let's have a look at, the, um, at our agenda of today, of this evening. So let's first have a look at the, uh, the purpose of this webinar, why we are doing it. And, um, we want you to meet the Lego Series Play method. Then just a bit about us, how the two of us came together and uh, why we are doing this webinar. And after we told you how a Lego Series Play works, we want to show you some case studies. Um, and Daniele, I think you prepared two or three of them. And um, at the end, like it's, um, like it's a common sense in every, um, in every other, in most of uh, the webinars, we will end with a Q&A session. And again, please don't hesitate at the bottom um, of your Zoom application, you have the, um, the button for the Q&As. So whatever question you have, don't hesitate to put them in. Okay. So what is the purpose of this, um, of this webinar? And uh, maybe you want to talk about this. Anyway. <laughs> so yes, let's start with the purpose of this webinar. Yeah, at first, it is not a training. So if you are not a Lego Studios Play uh, certified facilitator, it's, we are really happy to, to have you there. But it is not a training for you, so you will not able to run a Lego Studios Play workshop after this webinar. It's just a little, a little overview about the Lego Studios Play method. So understanding what is, and for sure, it's also important for us that you will also able to understand what is not Lego Studios Play. And as Matthias said in, uh, in the agenda, we also would like to, uh, to show you what happened in, in real life with the, some case stories. And maybe we will have a discussion about that. So let's start from the Lego Series Play method. And let me start from uh, about what is Lego Series Play not. Let me say that Lego Series Play is not an ice breaking. Sometimes when you come in the, in the meeting room when the bricks, and you will see the participants and the typical sentence here in Italy is okay, oggi si gioca, that is translated in English is okay, today we will play. And it's not so nice for us for sure, because sometimes people will, uh, will th there is a little misunderstanding with a toy and something serious. Legacy to play is not a nice breaking. You can do it with bricks for sure. You can do a little exercise to let people have fun, before starting work, starting doing a series. But Lego Series Play is not for ice breaking. Lego Series Play is not for uh, physical design, so to representing in three dimension something that in three dimension exists. So you can do it with bricks, as you can see in this picture, but 
legacy display is not run something uh, representing in 3D something that exists in real life in 3D. We will use legacy display to represent something that it's not physical, so it works with uh, abstracts and something that you can imagine, but it's not, you can do it with bricks, but it is not legacy display. You can do a lot of cool stuff with bricks regarding lean process, so understand how you, uh, you can and you maybe adapt your system in a, in a lean way, but again, you can do it with bricks, but this is not legacy display. And for sure, or we will discover that with Matthias in a few minutes, but it is not about team building. Behind legacy display, for sure, when you run a legacy display workshop, the, the, the team building is a, a free side effect that you, can, you can, that you can bring at home, but it is not the focus. So typically, uh, we, have, we would like to, to explain this because sometimes we have uh, companies and clients that call us and say, yeah, last year we, we did co-cooking to discover how it's important to work together. Or we, we sailed to discover who is the leader. Yes, okay, it's cool stuff. Team building activities. But legacy display is not used to do team building activities. And to discover what is legacy display, I will... So we heard what Lego Series Play is not. So let's have a look what Lego Series Play is. So in fact, it's, um, um, it's a facilitated, it's a guided method, which is based on a process. Um, so it's, it's, it's a method and it's used to make thinking easier, to help people to communicate. And based on that, teams and groups are able to solve very, very complex problems um, without the help of externals. So you don't need, uh, let's say, maybe consultants from a, from a consultant's company in order to do um, a team strategy or something like that. So this is something you can develop on your own or company strategy. But Lego Series Play is a lot more than that. So it's based on values as well. We, um, Lego Series Play facilitators, we think that people, they need to be heard and that people want to, um, want to participate. They want to assume responsibility. And if you think about the fact that managers don't know all the answers, which is quite disturbing sometimes for the managers, um, success depends on everybody who is in the room. So, and if we hear everybody who is in the room, we, uh, we are able to create business models um, which, uh, which, are, which are sustainable, other than what we are doing uh, normally. Let's do a quick, um, just a few, a few sentences about the two of us, how, how we, um, we got to know each other and how we, uh, how we came together. So, in 2016, the two of us, we um, uh, participated at a training in, in Odense. Um, so the training was delivered by Robert Rasmussen. Robert Rasmussen was the one who developed the Lego series play method at Lego in um, end, of, um, end of the 90s. Lego series play was released for strategy development in 2001. And uh, why am I telling you that we met in 2016? Because the interesting thing is that after these four days of training, which is quite exhausting, but um, after these four days, we are still, nearly all of us are still connected and uh, we're still exchanging about, uh, about ideas, about problems, about thoughts, thoughts all related to the method and beyond that. And this is something which is really different um, compared to any other meeting, any other, other training or workshop or whatever it was um, that I participated because usually you exchange numbers, you exchange email addresses and uh, well, you don't hear from each other anymore after just a few weeks. And this is really different here. So we are part of a big um, global community as well and we're meeting every year in, in Billund. So in 2017, in 2018, into, in 2019 and we all 
come together there. Um, and it's about, and yet I think it's about 250, 270 um, facilitators, roughly, from all over the world, to exchange and to, to work on the method to, um, to discuss different areas where it can be applied. And well, hopefully it will, it will be happening in uh, 2020. Let's, um, yeah, let's keep fingers crossed. <laughs> Um, Daniele, I think it's about, it's about you now. Uh, yeah, for sure. Why we are doing this webinar? Well, we have three, three, three answers because at first, and as you can see in the big hearts in the, in the slides, we discover that we love this method. We started as a, as individual in 2016 and we discovered how this methodology can bring you all together and you discover that it's not just a technique it's not just a method uh, robert rasmussen said that it is it's not it's not a religion but it's quite similar to a religion and it's uh, really really nice we we share some some values we we share similar point of views and i think we also share a different a, a new approach to well to the facilitate to the facilitation to the consulting to the coaching to uh, our typical activities as we run before the discovering the, the lego series play method during workshops uh, during trainings we really discover and every time understand the power of this method and we decided to dedicate our time to this method in uh, sharing experiences for example, the, the picture, the upper side in the, in the left, on this one in the right on the screen. It was a, a workshop that we run in Bergamo, in Frankfurt and in Munich in the same day, in the same time. And we did a little bit of uh, exchanging experiences and results about how different countries, how different people from different countries, from different, from different cultures run their workshop and discover something about themselves. And it was really, really nice. And we also would like to share experiences about how to integrate Lego Series Play with other tools. For example, in the other picture, you can see Lego Series Play integrated with the uh, value proposition canvas. So we decided to find a moment to start doing together and share our experiences, maybe also collect other point of view uh, from other facilitators and generating some, something bigger that is not just our knowledge or our experience. So this is the reason that bring it us to uh, run this webinar. And now we are going to discover what makes legacy display different uh, instead of our techniques or our method. In my experience, in my previous experience, or also today I run workshop with, with Post-it or other tools, but Lego Studios Play is really different for, for, some, for some motivation. And at first, I'm asking you to think, remember your last meeting. And please remember what do you thought during the meeting? If during the meeting you remember that someone was shaking the head saying mm -hmm, yes or maybe other guys were at the phone checking emails or maybe they are just silence and you, you didn't understand hey were they listening to me or not so if you remember this kind of meeting maybe you will discover this distribution of uh, of, of, your, of your attendees or of the people in the room. You have the 80% of the people that maybe are thinking to other stuff after maybe, I don't know, uh, two hours of, of meeting. You have a lot, some people that are not understanding anything. You have maybe some people that is thinking the opposite about you are saying or the speaker is saying. And it's nice because at the end of this kind of meeting, when the, the speaker that is managing the 80% of the content and is managing the 80% of the time and typically is 
managing the 80% of the decisions, when at the end of the meeting, this person of, or, or these people will say, uh, are you agree with this? And you are so tired that you have to say, yes, for sure, yes, yes. This is a beautiful idea. After a few minutes, if you go to the coffee machine, you will discover the same people in the room, the, the same people that, are, that said, yes, great idea, that are talking together and say, no, this, is, this idea is crazy. We will not able to do it. No, 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 I, I, I think that it's not possible. In, in our company, we, we will not able to do it. If you think to this kind of, of meeting, for us is the common meeting. So when you have the 20% of the people in the room that is managing the 80% of the content, managing the 80% of the time, and deciding the 80% of the output. Well, legacy display can destroy this mechanism and transform the traditional meeting, the common meeting, that typical is, the, the one that you see in this slide. So you have this person that is managing anything and the other guys that, it, that are trying to listen and give the attention to the, to the speaker. With Legacy Series Play, you can destroy this mechanism and transform your meeting into a 80-20, into a 100-100 meeting. And in this kind of dynamics, you will have that the 100 uh, percent of the of the content of the meeting will be generated from the 100 percent of the participants so it means that everybody in the room is part of the i don't know if the topic is the solution of something or the sharing of something so they are all part of the discussion and if you will if you uh, take the contribution from all the people in the room you are also able to discover the, the profile that we love to, to define the lonely guy. So who is the lonely guy? The lonely guy is the person that typically decide to not speak during the meeting. Maybe she or he is shy, so he don't want to expose uh, his or her ideas. Maybe this person uh, have the boss in the room, so prefer to not speak in front of the boss. And in this situation, you will lost all the contribution about the lonely guy. But typically, the lonely guy is the one that, are, that bring the unconventional idea in the, in the workshop, in the meeting. And one good example of a lonely guy was Steve Jobs. <laughs> when he uh, tried to let to the Apple um, uh, board understand his point of view, he was not able. The, 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 the language that he, that he used, the, the way of, of communication was not clear for all the other uh, people in the room or from all the board, and they decided to, to fire him. And what happened to, to Steve Jobs and what happened to the Apple? We're not saying that if they run the, the workshop with the Legacy Series Play instead of a traditional meeting, maybe something can change for Steve Jobs in that period, but who knows? How is important for us to, uh, to identify the lonely guy and let him or her take the voice and bring his value in the, in the workshop, in the meeting? Matthias, what do you think about the lonely guy? <laughs> so it's, it's like I said, it's about um, bringing the voice of everyone um, in the room um, to the table, that we hear everyone. And in fact, um, most... Very often we say the lonely guys are people who never raise up. But in fact, um, I'd rather say that lots of the times there is 80% of the participants who are in fact the lonely guys because they don't, they don't, they are not heard. And um, um, so the first purpose of a Lego Series Play Workshop is to create the lean in. And the next is to unlock knowledge, I'd say. So if you could switch the slide. Yeah. So what means on unlocking the knowledge? Um, most of the time we are using only the five to 10% of the knowledge that we know we know. So it's the explicit knowledge. And um, so 
as you can see, and we didn't we actually wanted to put in an iceberg, but uh, because you always have to have an iceberg in a, in a presentation, but we, uh, we only use the pyramid in this case. So um, we have 90%, 95% of the knowledge which, which is implicit, which is in the unconscious and in the non-conscious. And usually we don't use this, um, uh, this knowledge. We rather um, use the other knowledge and this is more or less implied by, by a trainer, by a teacher, by a consultant usually. So how to unlock um, the knowledge, Daniele? Yes, and I am I'm stalling this, this picture from Robert Rasmussen that is showed, showed us in our refreshing session in, in Bilan two years ago, three years ago. And yes, exactly, as, as, as you said, Matthias, typically the traditional approach works to enforce the explicit knowledge. We have a lot of, let me call it, traditional consultants or, or traditional trainers that bring in the company new procedures, new rules, new structures. That is just a new way to enforce the explicit knowledge. So you are not discovering nothing, nothing new. And for example, if the procedure says that to, if you want to, to move from the point A to the point C, you have to pass the point B. This is the procedure. But if you look to the real life, you will discover that people never pass the point B, but always find a new way to get to the point C. And how can you discover this real life? How can you discover, how can you translate the implicit knowledge into explicit? And with legacy display, you well, Robert Rasmussen described this, this process and discovered with a lot of years of, of, of studying that the only way to transform the implicit into explicit, so if you want to enlarge this area, the, the upper side of the of the pyramid, is to let pop up the content from, from the people and try to transform the implicit into explicit. This is the only way to, uh, to unlock more knowledge and to discover something that is maybe not new for the person, but it will be new for the team, for the company, for, for the people, because sometimes you can have something that you know, but have all the other participants, all the other colleagues does not know or about you or about your knowledge. But sometimes you have, and we are also have something that we know, but we don't know that we know it. That it sounds a little bit crazy, but it works. And Legacy Display allows you to discover all this content. And it is, you can do it because Legacy Display works in 3D and not in 2D. A stupid example, for example, if you, and this is a typical pain in the companies, you have the sales team and the operation team. And the, the problem in the company is that they are not able to talk together because they have this block. And if you stay in this level, you will be in the explicit area because everybody knows that sales and operation are not able to talk together. But with legacy display, with 3D, with this kind of popping up of information, you can maybe discover the point of view, for example, in the model. So if it is the sales and if it is the operation, from the whole, who is able to see who? It could be a good question. And it will, be, it, it will, it will allow you to discover something about the dynamics in the company. Maybe the sales are able to see, to see something, as you can see in this picture, in this model, that the operation team are not able to see. We, we don't know, it's just an example, but it is a way to discover something new and let people see something that really exists and it is not in a procedure, in a slide or in an Excel file. So it is a little trip in the uh, explicit, implicit, uh, unconscious knowledge and legacy display is the method that will, uh, will bring you a lot of unconscious uh, implicit, all that is inside of the people, bring it on the table and discover it. And another mm, 
why legacy display is different from other methodology, uh, other method, is because with these dynamics, so with these um, mechanism of use 3D instead of using 2Ds, you will be able to enrich participant, participants' point of view. At first, because you are able to discover something that is in your knowledge, but you're, you are not able to, uh, to explicit it, or <laughs> you, you were not able to do it before seeing it on the model. On the other side, you are also able to let us discover your point of view, and it will be easier for the team to discuss and having the, the same point of view or having uh, a common point of view about something. Matthias, what do you think about this concept, the, the enriching participants' point of view? Well, I would say, um, yeah, first of all, I, I fully agree. <laughs> and um, if you think about, um, well, think about uh, Vienna. So um, before, before the crisis, um, there have been uh, lots of tourists in, uh, in Vienna. And uh, may, may, maybe you remember the coaches. I mean, in front of the coaches, you have the horses. And all these horses, they have the blinders, right? Um, and in fact, we're wearing some kind, of, some kind of blinders as well. But let's call them filters. So what we have is um, due to uh, our culture, to um, the peer groups, the way we've been risen, um, our experiences, our emotions, and so on and so on. Maybe the um, culture of the organization where we, where we work at. Um, due to that, we have all filters, and these filters are applied on all the informations and all the things that we see and hear and, and feel. So um, with Lego Series Play, we are able to get rid of these filters, maybe not to get rid of all of them, but to get rid of uh, lots of these filters. So this is why it's, it's, um, it's that um, valuable to use it. And um, maybe let's have a look at some, some of the workshop techniques, um, Daniele. Um, so if you think about um, a Lego series play workshop, there are different, um, different techniques. And um, maybe if, let me explain this with a metaphor. So if you think about, um, and I'm really into food. So um, if you think about something called uh, Osobuco, um, there you have some ingredients as well. And the main ingredients of an osobuco, this is uh, the veal and this is tomato and garlic, and things like that. So these are things which are really um, crucial for, um, for this dish. And what are the crucial things for a Lego Series Play Workshop? So the first one, of course, um, these are the bricks. And uh, well, of course, you, all of you know the Lego Series Play bricks. And, um, we're using special sets of Lego series uh, of Lego bricks in these uh, in our workshops um, to help people to be creative. That's the only reason. If you can use all of them, but this is why we uh, why we, why we are using them. Um, so when we um, when we are doing these Lego series play workshops, we are not building models of the um, of the real world, what you're doing when you're playing with Lego usually. Um, what we are doing is we're building uh, stories, stories about things which are intangible. So um, this could be something like a team atmosphere, for example, or uh, innovation culture. So means, bricks and models become metaphors. And this means that Lego bricks are far away from being a toy for us. In fact, they are more language for systemic uh, creativity. Another ingredient that we have is the process that we follow all the time, so the core process. Um, and the way we work, the way a Lego series play workshop happens is that a question is asked and compared to a, uh, a normal meetup, a normal workshop, here now starts a big uh, the big difference. So instead of uh, having the 20% of the extroverted um, shouting out their ideas or their thoughts, the next step would be quiet time. So the next step is that people construct a model as an answer to the question. 
and once everyone build a model we are of course interested what everyone um, builds what everyone has built so it's about sharing the story of the model and of course if you have shared the, the story of your model people are allowed to ask questions to your model but you're only allowed to ask questions to the bricks so it's not allowed to interpret it's not allowed to judge the model and this is why um, a Lego series play workshop or within a Lego series play, play workshop, you have an, um, a safe space. And this is why people uh, exchange in a quite different way and uh, why it goes on a very, very deep level in a short period of time. And maybe the last, um, the last of, the, uh, of the ingredients is the application techniques. So one thing is the core process and the other is having different application techniques because you can use, you can do different things with the bricks. So it always starts with individual models. This means every participant's build on his or her own. Why is that? Because we want to have the knowledge of everyone in the room. We want to have 100% of the people to participate. And then we can decide how to continue. Either we um, create something called a shared model. This means everyone gives a part of his or her model, means his or her thoughts, into a common model so that everyone participates to a common solution. Or we can do a landscape. This means we position um, the models in, uh, in relation to each other, so if they're closer to each other or more far away from each other, this gives a meaning. We can add connections so to combine, to link these, um, these models or even create um, very complex systems. And I think you have, a, you have an example later on, Daniele, how an, um, a complex system can look like. And once we have a complex system, we can start to do simulations and detect how we as a team, how we as a group would act in an um, in unforeseen situation. And we can then detect patterns and prepare ourselves for the future. So this is about um, some of the, um, of the ingredients of the, um, of the LEGO Series Play Workshop. But um, coming back to the um, Osobuko, so if, if you think about having Osobuko only made of, um, of veal, tomato and garlic, I don't think it would be in the best taste. So we have some spices as well. What are the spices of a Lego Series Play Workshop, Daniele? Yes, and you're asking to a really bad chef. So I, I don't think that I will be able to continue with the Osobuko story. <laughs> but for sure, and maybe this is the reason why this metaphor works. Because for sure, if I, I'm really a bad cooker and I, I'm not a chef, but if I follow the list of ingredients, maybe the, the osobuco that I will try to cook, it's not so good, I think. You have also to add some spices, or for example, you, you have the, the magic touch of the chef. And so we decided to, to split these two main concepts, so something that is mandatory, so the bricks, the core, the application techniques, and something that could change the rule of the game and maybe uh, create a great workshop, so a great osobuko, the, the one that you will never uh, and never forget. And we, we, we would like to play this with this concept. At first, we have the facilitator. That is the, the facilitator is the, is the, the the not main actor in the room, he or she has just facilitated the process. Uh, he has to, he don't have to put information in the system, don't have to bring the people, the participants into a direction or another, but has to keep the, keep the flow, we will discover it in, in one slide, keep the participants in a safe place, in a safe way, let and preserve the 100-100 process, preserve the process, preserve the quality of the workshop, and 
go inside in models with participants, discover things with them, asking questions, and helping them in discovering something. And for sure, as Matthias said, don't have to bring content in the model. So if you, for example, uh, as a facilitator, you see this model, I don't think that you have to ask, oh, what's the meaning of these green flags? You are putting information in the system. These are bricks. And so you have to ask, for example, what's the meaning of this one? It's really, really simple. You have to, to be totally clear and you don't have to put any information in the system. They have to do it. The other important thing is the design of the workshop. You have to design the workshop and remember to keep the people in the workshop and in the flow. What is the flow? The flow is the situation where people are having fun during the activity. And you can see in this picture that you have a stripe in the middle of the, of the graph when you have, will have a, a point of, of crossing between challenge difficult and the, the skills, the knowledge, the, how, how you master the, the skills that you need to do something. And for example, if you look at a football match between me and Matthias that are playing together <laughs> versus, uh, I don't know, uh, Leonardo and, and Messi. I'm stealing a good example from Lucio Margulis that I always do this kind of example. What kind of, of match? Do you think that Matthias and me will have fun? No, we will lose 21 to zero. <laughs> do you think that Leonardo and Messi will have fun? No, they will just playing and, and maybe also uh, take, take joke of us. So it will not be in the flow. But if, for example, you will organize a match between Leonardo Messi versus, I don't know, Del Piero and Totti, it will be a good match? Maybe yes, the challenge is I and the, the level of, of skills is I. So you have to start in a workshop with really simple questions to let people that are not really able in using Brick to create stories to do it. So you have to start with something simple and we will discover that we have a specific phase where people will learn to talk with bricks, will learn to make stories with bricks. Matthias will explain you this, this topic in a few slides. And then you can grow up with the difficult of your challenge, of your questions. And so people will be always in the flow. So as a facilitator, when you, uh, when you are designing the workshop, you have to remember to, 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 to design your questions according to keeping them in the flow. Then we have another spices, Matthias. So um, in fact, this um, is combined with the, uh, with the flow. So we have the hand brain bone, as we call it. So the connection between, um, uh, between the cells in, uh, in the hand and um, the nerves in the, in the hand and the, uh, and the brain. So about 80% of, um, of the nerves in the, in the hand are directly connected to the brain. So this means um, if, you, if you think about, about the bricks and about the feeling that you have, if you have bricks in your hand, and I'm sure that you, um, that you, that you know what I'm talking about. Um, so you feel already the knobs, you feel the edges, you feel, um, you feel how, um, how the bricks feel. And so these feelings is um, what stimulates your brain the whole time you are using the bricks. So the whole time you're doing Lego serious play, the whole time, your the most part, the main part of your of your brain is stimulated, and this is why uh, we can unlock our knowledge from the unconscious, from the subconscious. Another one of the um, an, another spice, another ingredient um, is um, in fact the design. So, of course, we have to think about the design beforehand because every Lego Series work, play workshop is designed accordingly to, um, to the audience and to what they want to achieve. So we don't have prepared 
um, workshops. So it always starts with the framing. And the next thing is always um, about 45 minutes, about an hour um, to teach people, to explain people how to talk with bricks and to um, have them have confidence to the method and of course to the facilitator as well that they can open up and that they can exchange and nothing will happen. Um, having said that, we have the combination of the core process and the different application techniques and depending on what we, we want to achieve, we combine them in, um, in various ways. And of course, at the end, um, it's the closing. So how to bring what we have learned, what we have experienced, what we have built, what the participants have built to the real world. And if you think about the timing and um, the participants, so we have about, well, usually it starts about four hours, I'd say, um, of workshop um, until eight. It's uh, Daniel. It's it's more Italian hours, right? It's it's, <laughs> it's a bit more, and, and you can go up to um, two days, three days maximum, and um, the uh, the ideal size of a group is eight to ten people per per table, but you can go up to um, hundreds and thousands of people as well. Of course, if you work with hundreds and thousands of people, you work with more facilitators, and the um, um, the question that you have to work on that you that you work on um, is different so you can't usually you can't build a, a company strategy with uh, thousands of, of people so this is more about um, a table from eight to ten or two tables let's have a look at the case history Daniele Yes, you prepared so, something. Here. Yeah, so what happened? So now, now we're back to the uh, to the cooking metaphor, right? Yeah. <laughs> so when the cook opens up and say, "Hey, prepare something." <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, the, the real question is, yeah, beautiful, but yeah, Daniela, you 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 let show you show us this simple model, but what happened in real life? So what happened when you use bricks with your clients in in workshops? And I will uh, I will also uh, say that Matthias maybe we can uh, also explain some example of application before going into the cases, just to let them uh, have a little bit of surfing in this, in this area. Right. So, okay. Actually, um, like I said, I, I hope I, I mentioned it before. So um, actually Lego Serious Play, this was developed for the strategy design. So in the, uh, in the 90s, Lego was struggling. And uh, what they did is, uh, what the owner said was, we have to do strategy workshops. And this is what they did. And um, the owner, Kjeltke Christiansen, he wasn't satisfied at all. Because what happened is that they did just, just usual meetings, normal meetings, common meetings, so 2080 meetings. And he said, no, we have to do something different. So he contacted two uh, professors from the Institute for Management and Development, Management Development in Lausanne, and they started to de uh, the development, but somehow it didn't click. So this is where Robert Rasmussen came in. And um, in 2001, the first application uh, was developed and at this time, there was only um, applications, and this application was called the uh, real-time strategy for the, uh, uh, for the enterprise. And in fact, this was used by Lego as well. So this is where it comes from. And um, in fact, it's used whenever you have um, complex problems to be solved, complex problems where you need the uh, ideas, thoughts, and um, uh, from everyone in the room, on the table problems that you can't answer with a yes or no. Um, you use it for, for business coaching as well, for business design. And um, a colleague of us uh, used it in uh, future scenario planning as well. So future scenario planning developed originally by Shell. And a um, little anecdote, he uh, did this. He told me um, he did uh, future scenario planning with the company just a few years ago. And one of the... Um, scenarios, um, one of the unlikely scenarios that might happen, what they constructed was a scenario where people can't get into a room anymore to work together. 
So in fact, this company was um, kind of prepared for our Corona uh, pandemics. And um, Daniela, you said before that team building is something that we don't do with Lego Serious Play, which is true. Uh, in fact, every Lego Serious Play workshop pays into the team. But if you really want to do something with a team, we rather call it team forming. So we make, we're able to make the best team that you can get with the participants um, of the team that are in the room that are part of the workshop. And lots uh, of other applications um, are possible. Of course, it can be integrated as well with um, other, other tools. So we have the five bold steps, vision canvas and design criteria canvas. And you are the expert there, Daniele. I think you're doing the, uh, in Frank for the training in November, right? Um, as well in, in design thinking or um, in the scrum, in the scrum perspective, um, a retrospective and so on and so on. So lots of different things we can use Lego Serious Play, we can integrate it and we can, we can use it and make life easier for the life of the participants. Yes. And what happened in, in the room? So this is the, the areas, but what happened in real cases in the room? And I would like to share with you two examples of mine when, where I work with two different companies to different, different, different goals. So for example, in this situation, we have this company that are running this workshop, well, decided to use Legacy Display to run this workshop because they would like to define a new way or a better way of work of the management team. So uh, 1,000 people in the company, they have the first level of managers that are coordinating different business units, the BU that you find in the slide. They are not so uh, aligned in communication and in collaboration. So how we did it, we identify in this situation what works so what is good and we would like to still have in the future and what we could improve in our way of work between business units and as you can see in this picture in this model we will have one business units that is the how can we say the top performer business units so the one that work really, really good and could be maybe a best practice for all the others. Then we have three business units that need to improve something. So we are using the space of the table, as Matthias said before, between the two models, the space of the tables to define in that area. So in the first one, in the lower side, we have the here, we have the business units that need to improve something. And in the upper side, we have the top of business unit. And then we have also something in the middle. So you have, uh, we have other business units. They are working better than these three ones, but they have to learn something from the first one. Then we identified the relationships between the business units. And as you can see in this picture, you will find gray and black connection means good relationship. Then you have also red connection that are bad relationship. As you can see in this picture, you will see that at the top of the, of the table, the top performer business unit has three red connections. So three relationship that could be improved. And it, it happens during the workshop. And also the people say, whoa, why they, they discover it with a whoa? Because if you run a survey, for example, to all the managers and say, hey, where we have to work on, where is the business units that need to be improved? For sure, maybe they will point on the business unit one, two, and three, or maybe one of them, or who knows. But in this situation, they also discovered something new, that it was not in the, in the explicit knowledge. Do you remember the pyramid? This is a good example. And for sure, we also 
um, I also asked to the participants to build actions to improve or upgrade relationships. So they will able also to improve something that is good or well upgrade something that is good or improve something that needs to be improved. And you will see a lot of little models near to the business units and near to the connection because that, these are actions that will be unlock, for example, a new way of work of, work of, the, of this team, of this company. And it's a good example of how to do it with Lego Series Play. How can you discover something new with the 3D dimension? Another case is this one. It's a diff different project. So in this case, after um, merging, so an M&A process, we have two different companies that becomes one new company. And yes, for sure, they need to build a new brand identity. And they uh, need to define the simple guiding principle that Matthias explained. So the 87 that we discovered in the uh, spices, or well, no, in the ingredi ingredients. <laughs> so how we, how we did it, how we create these simple guiding principles and this new identity. We started from the as is identity, so the actual identity, who we are today, just to let all the participants, uh, let's share their own point of view about the actual situation. And also in this first step of the workshop, for sure, you as a facilitator and they as participants will discover something. Then they also build the future identity. So who we would like to be in the future. So we have today and the future. Then we build agents, so all the factors able to influence the transformation between the today and the future. That are all the little models that you can see in this table. Then we build relationships, so the most relevant relationship between the today identity, the future identity, and also the agents. So something similar to the previous model, so with all the connection that you can see in this table. And then the most nice, nice thing, nice thing that you can run in a legacy display workshop, playing scenarios. And so we collect some events and then we played events. So for example, events. And so people write on post-it some events and yes, our mm, bigger competitor will close tomorrow. Whoa! Does it have an impact on our system? If yes, where and how can we manage this impact? And, or for example, other events that we played, we will lose uh, our best client. So the client that let this company earn the, maybe it, it the, the leverage was the, 20 or 30% of the, of the revenue of this company comes from one client, this one. What will, what will happen if we will lose this client? And if you think to this answer and try to, uh, to this question and try to answer, for sure we'll, you will say, okay, we will, uh, we will reduce our turnover and we will maybe have to find new clients and maybe we will need to fire someone because we don't have the budget. So it could be rational uh, answer, explicit. So it's something that came from your explicit knowledge. But see in this video, what will happen if they will lose this client? As you can see in this image, you will put the this client far away from the future identity and you will see these white blocks falling down. It is the brand of the identity, the ide of, of this company. So the identity of this company will fall down if we will lose this client. And people in the room, all participants say, whoa, really? And they discuss about that, discuss it about this event, and we defined what we could do if it will happen, and how can we 
will manage if in the future will happen. And it helps, it helps them to describing the simple guiding principles. So something that is useful for you as a team to follow if in the future you will have to face some strange situation. And it's totally different to have a sort of decalogue, so a list of good things that you have to think before act, when you, that you are able to, to write this, this list when you are relaxed in the room with bricks in front of you and nothing happened in real life, instead of writing them when you, are, when you lost really your clients. And it's totally different. So you are playing with a model that represents the reality without having the risk of the real impact of the, of the event. And it's really, really, really useful to help the team to identify the guidelines that they have to follow in the future when they have to face, we hope that they will never face this event, but in the um, unlucky event of the losing of this client, they maybe know how to manage it, how to face it. And so it was two quick and dirty examples to let you see something, two different cases. Yes, Matthias. Just, um, just um, I have two questions already for you yeah. about, about this one. And uh, I, want, I want to add something. So the events, like you said, so this is something which comes from the participants, right? So they have time to brainstorm and they come up with some events which are likely to happen, which are unlikely to happen. But in fact, these are things which concern them more or less right? because they put it on the table. But <clears throat> what, I want, uh, what I want to ask is how many participants um, do you have usually in a workshop like that? Um, how long does it take? Oh, yes. Uh, in this workshop, we were 12 people. That is the maximum that the method uh, has to one facilitator. And it was the two day workshop. Okay. Two days. Yeah. Yeah. And quite longer, but really the impact and the, the value of this activity is really, really huge. Mm -hmm. And if you, some, sometimes when you are facing your clients, and the typical sentence is, yes, so my guys has to play bricks for two days because they <laughs> don't know either the method. Yeah, the, the, really, the really answer is that the value that you will discover in these two days, it's more and more higher instead of months of traditional meetings. And it's true. Mm -hmm. They will discover after the workshop. <laughs> Okay. But it's a challenge also for us. And the second questions? These have been the questions that I have. Okay. <laughs> but I, I'm seeing that we have other questions in our chat because now is the time for Q&A. So let's discover. So we come to our, next, uh, to our last slide. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> So thank you very much for participating. It was a pleasure having you. And um, here are our contact details. We will send you a follow-up email afterwards and um, we'll send you um, how to contact us. And it would be a pleasure if you would decide to stay in contact with us. So have a great evening and thank you very much for participating. Goodbye. Bye-bye, thank you.